turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. We'll begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven, and I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such an one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in mine infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasures in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak... Then am I strong. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, we thank you for all your choice blessings. We thank you for the privilege afforded us to be able to come to the house of God this morning. Lord, we thank you for this good number that's assembled this morning. Thank you for a good report of the good jail services. Thank you for a good Sunday school hour. Thank you for being a good God. Thank you for allowing me to see my friend, Brother Todd, and his family. What a blessing they've been to me through the years. Lord, we love them, and God, we're thankful to get to see them today. Now, Father, for the next few minutes, I pray you'd help us. Lord, there seems to be a heaviness here. There seems to be a weight. And so, Lord, we pray that you'd put a hedge about us. We certainly plead that you'd bind the powers of hell. We pray that you'd bless your people. There may be a heaviness because some are facing heavy burdens. Some may be facing some tumultuous trials. Some may be facing heartache and some may just have been contending with the old flesh and the old devil all week. Lord, we do not know, but you know. But we do know one thing, that Lord, you're good to us. Lord, your grace is sufficient, and God, you're a great God. I pray for the next few minutes you'd help that one that is struggling. I pray for that one that is seeking they would find. I pray as Brother Todd has prayed, if there be any amongst us today unsaved, never been born again, that today would be the day of their salvation. I pray that you'd use this unworthy vessel. Help me to say everything you'd have me to say. Help me not to say anything contrary to the word or will of God. Lord, you alone know us what we stand in need of, and God, you do all things well, and I pray you'd help us this day. We bless your holy name. Have your will and way amongst us, for it's in the wonderful and holy and glorious name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen. Amen. Many say that the Apostle Paul's the greatest man outside the Lord Jesus that ever walked on the face of the earth. The Lord Jesus himself said it was John the Baptist. But I can say one thing, I have never laid eyes on anybody the caliber of the Apostle Paul. What a great man of God he was. A man that suffered much, but a man that did much for the honor and glory of God. Nearly half of your New Testament was penned at his hand. 
He planted churches throughout the known world and was used of God greatly. I dare say, had it not been for the Apostle Paul being obedient to bring the gospel to the Gentile nation, you and I would be lost and on our way to hell today. Notice some things about this text. I want you to notice the blessing of Paul. He says in verse number 1, It's not expedient for me, doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. And then he goes on, he says this a couple times, he knew a man uh, uh, in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knoweth, such a one caught up to the third heaven. Uh, and I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. Now listen, he's not saying I cannot tell because I cannot know. He's saying, I cannot tell because I'm not permitted to tell. God knoweth. But there was a blessing of Paul that he was blessed of God to be able to be caught up to the third heaven and see things that you and I can't even imagine. Hmm? Amen. Amen. Can I say that all that Paul went through, a man that was in prison, a man that was stoned, a man that was beaten several times uh, with 40 stripes save one, uh, a man who was persecuted the way he was persecuted. Uh, I'm glad that God was able to every now and then uh, allow him to see a little extra, uh, uh, to give him a little fuel in his tank to keep him going for the honor and glory of God. Uh, can I say this every time I seem to get a little low? God might just send somebody by my way to give me just a little something extra just to keep me going down the road. We see the blessing of Paul, but Paul had a burden. Look at the burden of Paul. Look at verse number 4. He says how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words uh, which is not lawful for a man to utter. The burden of Paul was is that he saw and heard things that he couldn't talk about. Right. Hmm? Yep. Matter of fact, he tells this same church, the church at Corinth, uh, uh, whether to go or to stay. Uh, he was having a hard time with. Uh, he said to be absent from the bodies, be present with the Lord. Uh, uh, but he also said, I'd like to go, but I'm torn betwixt the two because yep. it's necessary for me to stay for your benefit. Huh? Yep. Now let me just pause right here for a minute, neighbor. This isn't the message, but this might help you. Paul was allowed to say that it hasn't entered in the heart of man yep. for, to, uh, for the things that God hath prepared for them that love him. Yep. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again, receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. Right. Friend, I know uh, we look around this world and I know that uh, uh, in our flesh there are things that cause us to hesitate. We're ready to go to heaven. We just don't want to go right now. Uh, uh, but friend, if you could really get a glimpse of the other side uh, and the glory of the Lord. And John gave us a few glimpses. Uh, and if you could get a glimpse of what God hath gone to prepare for you and I. Uh, uh, friend, death would not be the king of terrors. Uh, death would be a stepping stone to go on to the other side and be with the Lord. Uh, and friend, uh, you and I that have loved ones that are over there. Uh, uh, friend, they're not suffering. Uh, uh, they're uh, being what they were created to be. Uh, their agencies to praise and worship and glorify God. Uh, and what a blessing it'll be when we get over there. Say, what are we going to do when we get to heaven? We're going to worship the Lamb. Because without Him, we wouldn't be there. Mm -mm. Uh, but He had a burden. He wouldn't tell us all about it. But He couldn't. I'm trying to move on, but I can't. We, we, had a, we had a fella here one time, Brother Harold Bowen. We was in the old building. And Brother Harold had bad health. Had real bad health. Had a bad heart. And uh, uh, it seemed like just every, about once a month, he's having to go to VA hospital and his heart was failing and he's having all kinds of problems. Uh, Brother Harold's the one that gave me the ideal that uh, uh, when we went to build this building to write all the names that are on this altar for us to pray for. That's what that number is up there. That's how many names are written on this altar. Uh, and 894 of them were lost people. And that's to remind us to pray for those names uh, and pray that God would have mercy on them. 
uh, and I'll never forget I got a call uh, uh, one day that Brother Harold uh, his heart had ceased uh, and the emergency ambulance came and got him and took him to the VA hospital uh, and he was non-responsive in intensive care uh, and was in a coma that's what they told me so I rushed up there to Cincinnati VA hospital uh, and I go rushing in there uh, and sure enough he's in the ICU unit uh, they've got all kinds of tubes and machines brother Bob hooked up to him uh, and remember brother Charlie I've been told that he's non-responsive and in a coma so I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm asking the Lord to bless him and brother, Bob, uh, brother Brian as sure as I'm standing here I just patted his hand well, his eyes popped wide open. He said, how you doing, preacher? <laughs> now, I want to tell you something. I, I about had an out-of-body experience myself right then. I kind of got the woolly boogers real quick. Huh? I said, what are you doing? I said, you're supposed to be non-responsive. Well, to make a long story short, Brother Harold was mad because they brought him back because he was ready to go, and they kept shocking him, and they brought him back. And I'm sitting there fellowshipping with him and talking with him. And he said, uh, uh, Brother Doug, I know what the Lord has in store for me. And of course, I, I'm the pastor. I'm trying to be spiritual. I said, yeah, I, I know Brother Harold. He's gone to prepare a place. And he's got mansions over the hilltop, streets of gold, gates of pearl. He stopped me. He said, no, preacher. I got a glimpse and he started talking and I had to hush him up I said brother Harold uh, 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 you've got to hush or I'm going to tear this hospital room all to pieces uh, uh, friend can I say uh, it would do us some good if we would get a glimpse of what God's got in store for us uh, we see the blessings of Paul and the bur burden of Paul but I want you to notice the buffeting of Paul look at verse number 7 he said, unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations. Let me stop right there. The Bible says where much is given, much is required. And the Apostle Paul was blessed to see and hear things that most people can't even imagine. But in order to keep him on the path that he had to walk, God kept him in check. Mm -mm. you know it's a dangerous thing when we start taking credit for what God's done in our lives that's why most of you know on the way out if you thank me for the message I'll never take credit for it because I, it's not my message everything that I am everything that I have every ability that I have all came from the hand of God and if I trust in my own conceits oh mercy what a mess what a mess that would be. And Paul says, Lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. The Apostle Paul of any man had more right to brag about his accomplishments but he refused to do it and just to make certain he was buffeted by a thorn in the flesh now there's been much debate to what Paul's thorn was it's not important or God would have told us but I do know that his thorn was a personal thorn it was something he carried with him every day something he couldn't get away from huh? kind of much like uh, uh, Israel hmm? he had a burden that he couldn't get away from hmm? Jacob walked with a limp the rest of his days oh with Israel came blessing but it also came with a limp others my dear friends were blessed but there was reminders of what it cost for their blessing it was a personal thorn it was a probing thorn Hmm? did you ever get like a splinter and it was just in one of them spots that drove you crazy hmm? did you ever about tear your ring finger off hmm? how's that finger feeling now yeah it's there hmm? it was a probing thorn it was a piercing thorn it was a permanent thorn as long as he was in this body 
Now, I'm not going to preach on a thorn in the flesh. Although I am glad the next verse he said that God told him, My grace is sufficient for thee. And friend, can I say you'll never go through anything that God don't have enough grace to help you get through it? I'm interested in verse number 10. He concludes this verse by saying, For when I am weak, then am I strong. I don't preach on this thought this morning. I want to preach on weak-minded Christians. Now, Brother Bob, I got two of you. I did not say I'm preaching on weak Christians. There's a difference between a weak Christian and a weak-minded Christian. Can I say that weak Christians have very little faith? And without faith, it's impossible to please God. Can I say that weak Christians have very little fervency or devotion? Mm, little dedication. Mm. But can I say this? Weak Christians also have little fire. But I'm interested in weak-minded Christians. Paul had the right mindset. He said, when I'm weak, when the thorn was given to buffet me to keep me weak, I found out in my weakness I'm made strong in the grace of God. A weak-minded Christian understand what, understands what it is to depend on God. So let me give you a few things about weak-minded Christians. Can I say, first of all, that weak-minded Christians are a tool for God. Look again at verse number 7. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Uh, uh, Paul said that uh, had I been left to my own conceit, I'd been no use for God. Uh, uh, but hey, being a weak-minded Christian uh, who has to depend on God, uh, uh, now he's not exalted above measure, uh, but he's humble, and God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Uh, and God can use someone of a humble estate uh, uh, to be a tool to be be a vessel, to be an instrument uh, that brings others to God. Uh, what a blessing to be a tool for God. Can I say nothing better will ever will anything ever be said of you other than that you have been used of God to help somebody else. Mm -hmm. Now we can't save anybody but if God puts his hands on us we can short, certainly point them to who can save them. Huh? We can't do anything of ourselves. Jesus even told us in John 15, without him we can do nothing. Without his touch we're not much. But in his hand, the master can take any of us and do something great. A weak-minded Christian, he's a tool for God. Can I say something else about weak-minded Christians? They're tried. Mm, yes. Mm, Paul said that he was given that thorn of the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet him, lest he should be exalted above measure. Peter talked about the trial of our faith. Can I say, if it's not been tried, it can't be trusted. And weak-minded Christians are tried. Can I say, Christian, that's why a lot of people don't want to be a weak-minded Christian. Hmm. What they don't understand is they're being tried anyway. At least in the court of public opinion. Those fellows you work with, that you keep inviting to church, keep witnessing to, they may never come to church with you, but they're watching your life. Absolutely. Hmm? So you're being tried. Might as well let the master try you and then let him use you. Because it's one thing for him to see you. It's another thing for them to see his hand on you. Hmm? Uh, a weak-minded Christian is tried. Hmm? You still got that baby? You ain't giving her up, are you? Yeah, all right. She's happy. Hmm. Huh? You know why that baby's happy? That baby's trusting Miss Vanessa. Yep. Trusting Miss Vanessa not to drop her. Trusting Miss Vanessa to feed her if she gets hungry. And what a blessing to change her if she gets dirty. Hmm? Huh? That baby can do nothing on her own. Why do you think the Bible talks about us having a childlike faith? Sure. When we get to realize that we can do nothing on our own, 
And we have to depend on God to hold us. We have to depend on God to uh, uh, feed us. And we have to depend on God to clean up our messes. My dear friends, we become weak-minded, but we become heavenly strong. Hmm. Uh, Paul went on to write to Galatia, not I, but Christ that liveth in me. Hmm. Can I say... Weak-minded Christians are not only a tool for God, and they're not only tried, but weak-minded Christians travail. Look at verse number 9. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Can I say, and I know Brother Todd doesn't have this problem down in Florida, but I'm so tired of Christians and preachers and deacons and trustees and teachers quitting on God. You know the easiest thing to do is quit. It's also the hardest thing to do because then you have to contend with God rather than the devil. Hmm? But weak-minded Christians, they find another gear. And they travail. Sure. Hmm? Hmm. At about eight and a half months, Miss Taya was ready to deliver Miss Ella Rose. About 15 minutes into them contractions, she was beginning to wonder about that thing. 30 minutes in, she said, no more. This is it. We're not having any more. And then we got her. By the time they got her home, she's thinking, I could do that again. Hmm. can I say the blessing of the product of the travail is far worse the pain of the travail and when the blessing arrives you forget all about the pain hmm. uh, weak minded Christians travail uh, now listen they are remorse they're broken It troubles me when there are folks who claim to be saved for 30 years, but you never see them broken. Hmm? I'm going to give you this. Hope this doesn't offend you. If it does, oh well. I'll take a baby aspirin and go to sleep tonight. Nobody in here has a red cape or a big yellow S on their chest. Nobody in here has a halo. Hmm? Uh, there's no super Christians. There's just Christ-like Christians and non-Christ-like Christians. But friends, somewhere along the line, if nothing else, when you get a glimpse of Calvary and what Jesus paid for your sin, it'll break your heart. The weight of seeing loved ones not come to Christ will break your heart. The weight of seeing sinners reject the gospel and reject the good news of Christ will break your heart. Coming to church and seeing Christians grow colder and colder and colder on God will break your heart. Those that travail, they, they get broken. One writer wrote... God will never use a man greatly until he wounds him deeply. I can remember we used to go to the shopping mall. I made a point to look at people's faces and look in their eyes, Brother Ron. And so many people in this world have no hope. They're existing, but they're not alive. Used to break my heart. The indictment is, as I've gotten so busy and so used to seeing people, it doesn't break my heart like it used to. Weak-minded Christians, they travail. They're remorse. They're also reliant on God. Hmm. She knew either that epidural 
or Jesus was getting her through that. Hmm? I wasn't back there, didn't want to go back there, couldn't have paid me to go back there. I paid my price three times. But I'm thinking, I'm glad I'm not in his shoes. Because she's miserable. Nothing gives her relief. But as soon as she held her. And even if it didn't bring you relief, it brought us a lot. <laughs> we had her last night. Said, so what would you do? I just held her. When she's at the house, I'm good for nothing. Hmm? That's what babies are here for. We're to hold them. And spoil them. And give them back to mama. But weak-minded Christians, they travail. And they become broken. They become dependent on God. But they also remain. Let's flip back a few pages to chapter number 4. I get so tired of people stubbing their toe and thinking that God hates them. One person in the family gets a runny nose. They all stay home. This is what Paul says. Verse number 8 of chapter 4. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Hmm? Now listen, Paul said everywhere he looked, he saw trouble coming his way. He said, but I'm not stressed about it. Lord have mercy, we can't even drive to church without getting stressed out. Huh? Yeah, amen. He said, we are per perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Yeah. Huh? Paul never saw the glass half full. He just always saw it for what it was. And no matter what came his way, he realized he ought to be in hell. But he's not going to hell because of the grace of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Do you realize this is as close to hell as a Christian's ever going to get? Amen. You could depend on Paul. He was uh, uh, faithful to the end. As a matter of fact, he even said, I've finished my course. I kept the faith. Uh, 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 those Christians that are weak-minded, they travail, they remain faithful to God. Hmm? I thank God for those of you. I look around, some of you have been here 20 years, 25 years, 15 years, and, and to endure me for that long, you've got a special crown in heaven, I'm telling you. Huh? But thanks be unto God for those that just remain. There's some, there will always be some that come and go, but hey, weak-minded Christians, they remain. Hmm? Can I say this about weak-minded Christians? They're true. They're true. Verse number 9 tells us again, Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Whew. I would to God that most Christians and most preachers quit looking for an easy way out. Quit asking God to remove the thorn and say, I'd rather be in this shape and have the touch of God than to have the thorn removed and have an easy path and no touch of God. Hmm? Can I say most of the time people are asking God to remove the very instrument that God is wanting to use in their life so they can become usable for Him. That thing you're asking God to take away might be the very thing He's placed in your life so that you can point other sons unto glory. Yeah. Amen. Mm. Paul said, I'll just glory in my infirmities that the power of God may rest upon me. Mm. The problem, Brother Tony, is that so many people have gotten so used to living without the power of God, they're more comfortable there than having the touch of God in their life. I thought of this lastly. Weak-minded Christians are triumphant. Yeah. Hmm. Verse number 10, he tells us, he tells us that when I'm weak, then am I strong. So many Christians, Brother Ray, are defeated. They're defeated 
because all they do is look around. Well, wasn't that a great message from my brother Cody about living you know, above the sun? Huh? Living above the clouds and all that's going on. You see, most people don't live there. Instead of looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, we just look around. Hmm? We see all the problems. We can't see the Lord because we put all our problems right here. And everywhere I look, all I see is me and my problems. I learned this a long time ago. If I'm not going to look at him and I'm going to look around, look around and see that you don't have it as bad as you thought you did. Hmm? Too many of God's people live a defeated life. And when they go to, jo to the job, and when they go to school, and when they go out in the community, they got the same verbiage as the world does. They're complaining about the weather, complaining about this in their life, complaining about that in their life. And who in the world would want what we got yeah, really if it's no better than what they have? Right. Hmm? Huh. Well, the weather's terrible, but Jesus is wonderful. Well, you see what's going on in this old sin-cursed world. Yeah, but if you knew what was going on in my home. You get to talk in that way around them long enough, either they're going to leave you alone, or they're going to want what you have. Because there's nothing good in this world. The news will lie to you. The government will lie to you. Huh? Your dog will lie to you. But Jesus won't. Amen. Paul said, All men forsook me, and nevertheless the Lord stood by me. Amen. Hmm? I'm saying, friend, weak minded Christians, they don't see everybody walking out, they see Jesus hanging out. Amen. They're triumphant. Yes, sir. Now, every one of us, if we're honest, every one of us could have could tell some kind of problem we got. Hmm? Your corns are barking, your uncle arthritis has showed up, whatever bursitis is, I don't know if people still have that. I remember when I was a young man, everybody, all the old people talked about their bursitis. Huh? Bursitis is showing up, young people stressed out because they're getting gray hair, huh? didn't get enough likes on whatever you got likes on. And, and if, we, if we really get around, we've all got something negative we could dwell on the difference between weak minded Christians and weak Christians weak Christians dwell on it weak minded Christians have learned to dwell on him hmm. can, can I help you with something God give us weak minded Christians where we just learn to depend on him his strength his grace his sufficiency his mighty arm his word yeah. even his people because when we learn to depend on the right things you'll have victory hmm? Hmm? listen never liked a loser never wanted to pull for a loser never wanted to be a loser never liked losing did you ever play on a team that never won? It's pretty depressing. I'm not talking about the ones you coach, Tommy. <laughs> it is true. I prayed and asked God, help me not say anything that was contrary to his word or his will. And you're a loser, Tommy. Sorry. You're a great guy, but need some help in the coaching department. And I, I, I offer Bob. Bob will help you. No? We don't like losing. But we accept it as Christians. Yet the Bible says, Thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Right. We're promised victory, yeah. but we don't live there. Yeah. God help us hey. to just live in what God's provided. Yeah. You don't have to be a loser, especially in this way called faith. Yeah. Here's the secret. The way to God is down. Hmm? Yeah. When you get on your face before God, He gets big in your life. Hmm? Huh? The things of God are simple. 
we complicate them. Hmm? If we just take his word at face value and believe it, and practice it, you'll have victory. Unfortunately, I'm as guilty as anybody. Too many times we let it go in one ear and out the other until something falls apart. Then all of a sudden we want to scramble it and find it. Amen. Why don't we just live in it? Amen. Become a weak-minded Christian. Too many of us think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. And the Bible says, Brother Ron, as a man thinketh, so is he. And so the greater you think you are in your mind, you build that person up. And that's why you have so much, so much of a difficult time with trials and tragedy. When you realize, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. The life I now live by the, uh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And my dear friends, when we put ourselves in our right perspective and become weak minded God can do great things in our life uh, he's not going to write another bible but he may use you to write somebody's name down in heaven will you be a weak minded Christian or just a weak Christian hmm. life's too short for weak Christians churches are floundering because there's too much weak Christianity Preachers are floundering because they become weak. God help us just be weak-minded. Depend on God and see what God does. Uh, again, I'll quote Larry Seals. Without his touch, we're not much. I just want his touch. And that comes being a weak-minded Christian. Which are you today? You may be here today and you might not be a Christian. You can't be. The Bible says, whosoever shall believe on, or call on the Lord shall be saved. You can be saved today. Say, preacher, I don't know how to be saved. We'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how to be saved. In order to get saved, you've got to realize you're lost. Realize you need the Lord. Oh, you come to that realization, friend, I promise you, the Lord loves you. And he wants to save you. He died for you. If you're saved, he died for you too. And he wants to bless you. He wants you to live in victory. He wants you to have joy. He wants you to have hope. And it all comes with just being a weak-minded Christian. Totally dependent on him. How's your life today? Let's all stand. Brother Clint, if you'll come get a song of invitation. God spoke to your heart. The altar's open. If you're here today and you're not saved, if you come, we'll get, get somebody to take a Bible and show you how to be saved. Maybe you want to come this morning and just tell him you love him or tell him thank you. Tell him thank you for the word of God and thank you for what he's done in your life. Folks are coming. They're picking out a song. Let's pray, Father, we love you. Thank you for the Bible. Lord, thank you for what you did in Paul's life because of what you've done in his life it impacted my life. And Lord, I pray that you'd use me to impact somebody else's life. Father, I pray you know the heart of everyone here today. I pray if anybody's unsaved, they'd come. Let's take a Bible and show them how to get saved. Lord, I pray for those that are saved that might be weak. Help them to become weak-minded. Those that are weak-minded, help them to remain. And God, I pray you'd use them for your glory. Help us to live in the victory that you provided. And God, have your way this morning. We'll bless you for it, for it's in Jesus' holy name we do pray. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.